So today's video is a follow-up from our previous video where we used the Lego and the Lego motors to explain the concepts of horsepower and torque. As we have seen, torque is a twisting force. In other words, it's the rotational equivalent of a linear force. In simplest terms, torque determines how quote-unquote strong the rotation of your motor or engine is. We have also learned that horsepower is the rate of torque, or the frequency of torque application. In other words, horsepower is torque times RPM. In today's episode, we're going to add gears into the equation to see how they can be used to manipulate torque and speed. So here again we have our two motors. The large motor generates 0.14 newton meters of torque and the small motor generates 0.03 newton meters of torque. The last time we have seen that the small motor couldn't generate the torque needed to move this heavy arm. The large motor has more torque, i.e. more quote-unquote strength, and thus it could move the heavy arm without much trouble. Now we're going to use gears to enable the small motor to move the heavy arm. Instead of trying to move the heavy arm directly with the small motor, we're going to connect a gear to the motor's shaft and we're also going to attach another gear to the heavy arm. As you can see, the small motor is no longer acting directly on the heavy arm. Instead, they're now interconnected via these two gears. And voila! The small motor can now do the same thing as the large motor. We didn't have to increase motor size, all we had to do was use gears. So how and why does this work? Well, as you have seen, we have connected a small gear to the motor and a large gear to the heavy arm. So how much smaller is the small gear than the large gear? Well, we can easily calculate the ratio between the two gears by counting the teeth. We're going to call the gear on our motor the driver gear, because this is the gear where the force input is, and this is the gear that does the work. This gear has eight teeth. We'll call the gear on the heavy arm the driven gear. This gear receives the force input and has work done on it. This gear has 40 teeth. So how do we obtain the ratio between the two gears? We simply divide the number of teeth on the driven gear by the number of teeth on the driver gear. And the result is 5. This is our gear ratio. If we switch our small gear with this one, which has 24 teeth, our gear ratio becomes 40 divided by 24, which is 1.67. So by using different gears that have different numbers of teeth, we can manipulate the gear ratio. So what does the gear ratio tell us? It tells us how much we have increased the torque using this gear arrangement. Our initial torque on the small motor was 0.03 Nm. To figure out the new torque output value at the larger gear, we simply multiply the initial torque with our gear ratio. So 0.03 Nm times 5 gives us 0.15 Nm. This means that with the help of gears, the small motor is now outputting more torque than the large motor. So why does this gear arrangement increase the torque coming from the motor? The answer is pretty simple. It's because the large gear is larger than the small gear. To fit a larger number of teeth onto a gear, you must increase its radius. By increasing the radius, you're increasing the physical distance between the force input and the force output. In other words, by increasing the radius, you're increasing the leverage provided by the gear. The gear acts like a lever, and as you probably know or have experienced yourself, the larger the lever, the larger the force output. So does this mean that you can get a Honda Fit and start a cargo business with it? Obviously the torque coming from the engine doesn't matter because with a large enough gear, you can endlessly manipulate the torque output. Well, you have probably never seen a small car towing cargo trailers, and there's a reason for it. In reality, and in physics, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The torque increase coming from larger gears comes at a price, and the price is rotational speed. Our small Lego motor is capable of doing 275 full rotations in one minute. In other words, it spins at 275 RPM. It's significantly faster than our large Lego motor, which does 146 RPM. 
But as you can see, after we install our gears to increase the torque, the small Lego motor actually becomes slower than the large motor. How much slower? We can again easily calculate that using our gear ratio. We simply divide the initial speed with the gear ratio to get our new output speed. So 275 divided by 5 is 55. So 55 RPM is the new output speed. This means that to have more torque than the larger motor, the small motor had to sacrifice its speed. By becoming 5 times stronger, it also became 5 times slower. So why does this kind of gear ratio decrease speed? The answer is again simple and again it's the gear size. To fit a larger number of teeth, we need a larger gear radius. A larger gear radius also means a larger circumference, or the total length along the edge of the gear. The larger the circumference, the more distance needs to be covered to make the larger gear achieve one full rotation. Our gear ratio can also be expressed as 5 to 1. It tells us that for every 5 rotations of the driver gear, the driven gear makes only one rotation. So what happens if we switch the driver and driven gears around? As you can see, the rotation speed is now faster than ever. This time our gear ratio is 8 divided by 40, which equals to 0.2. It means that now our output torque is 0.03 times 0.2, which is 0.006, so our torque has been dramatically reduced. Our output speed is 275 divided by 0.2, which is 1375 RPM, so our speed has been dramatically increased. This means that by switching the gears around, we have also switched their effects. And all of this explains why gear ratios of a typical car transmission usually look something like this. The lower gears reduce speed and increase torque. This is because we need the most torque to get the vehicle going from a standstill in first gear. And we also need torque to help increase acceleration to get the vehicle up to speed. But once we're up to speed, the vehicle has a lot of inertia and we don't need as much torque to push it along. What we need is increased rotational speed or an increased number of wheel rotations per minute to allow the vehicle to achieve even higher speeds. And there you have it, a simple and very visual explanation of gear ratios. Obviously, this just scratches the surface of the topic and there's a lot more to gear ratios, but that's something we'll be talking about in future videos. So for now, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.